Well, it's Sunday in real time, and uh, it's Mother's Day. So that's when we're really doing this, in case you watch it later. It's Sunday, and we're not going anywhere, but it's pandemic, and we're never going anywhere. <laughs> it's going to be here forever. I have a, a guest on the uh, on the other screen that we're putting up here, and that's Christina Pantanelli. And it's uh, I asked you to be on the show on Mother's Day, so this will apply every day because every day is Mother's Day if you if you come from the mother that I came from. Uh, and and I I think everybody in, who's Italian never gets over their mother. And as a matter of fact, in the twelve step meetings, everyone always has a mommy issue. There's never anybody who doesn't have a mommy issue, Ron. Just in case anybody wants to know the background here, I'm in Florida. Uh, Christina's in New York. Where are you? In Manhattan? Joey, I'm in the middle of what they're calling the, the hotspot war zone. I'm in Manhattan. I live right near Times Square. And uh, it's been an experience. But I am so happy to see you and see your face. I mean, it's like amazing. And you look wonderful. You have a Florida tan. I'm jealous. You know? Well, this age. <laughs> you better well, come down here. <laughs> I'm, com I'm coming as soon as they let us go. <laughs> no, I love Pat Cooper used to say, I said, Pat, why did you move from Florida? You know, he moved to Vegas. He said, yes. I had to go to New York. I had to go to, I got to go somewhere. I'm tired of watching Gunsmoke. Yep. That's all he did when he was here. <laughs> so I called him yesterday and I said, are you watching Gunsmoke? No, I'm watching Seinfeld. <laughs> uh, I miss Pat. Oh, well, he upgraded really his... He upgraded his material. <laughs> so Christina's an opera singer. Well, she's a singer. I just, I, but you know, uh, Gail King is on CBS in the morning. She was belly aching that she didn't get invited to the to the uh, uh, the gala. They call it right, the Metropolitan Opera Gala. You okay. know what that is? What's a gala? Is it a, is that homosexual? <laughs> no, no, that's not. That. <laughs> What's a gala? What is it? Or you could say gala, gala. Oh, gala, well, gala. You know what it is? I mean, I think most of the time it's run by charitable organizations. It's their way of fundraising, you know, and giving people a chance to dress up. Some people really still like to do that or, you know, have a special occasion to go to. And my yeah. friends, I there's so much going on all the time, even now, that I don't even know what's going on. So I have wonderful friends across the spectrum that, Send me links, you know, and they sent me about the Metropolitan ga Gala, Gala, and um, I didn't even have a chance to look at the picture. <laughs> well, in New York, I live in Lincoln Center, which is right across the street from the Met, and I, uh, I said, if I'm going to see anybody, it'll be the Barber of Seville, there the you way go. my hair is going right now. Well, the way, so, uh, right? Have you, have you ever been in the Metropolitan Opera? you ever been in one of those? Oh, Joey, you know, I... I I never sang at the Metropolitan Opera, and I probably should have. My career went off at, uh, into many directions, as you know. I mostly became, I've sung in opera houses all over the world, even right. the Palm Beach Opera and the Cairo <laughs> Opera. And, um, but I also became very much known as an Italian singer, as, which is why I know you, Joey, you know? Yeah. Because my career as an Italian singer has been the bulk of my career, and I, in during this pandemic, I've had time to look through my files, and I have found flyers. I forgot I even sang there. You know, I sang with the best, uh, famous uh, Italian singers. Only not Frank Sinatra, unfortunately. Uh, he was from my mama's hometown. But I was on shows as a, I was going to say as a child. You know, when I first came out with Frankie Lane, with Al Martino, with Jerry Vale. I was wow. talking to Vic Damone. I was ready to go get on a plane and go down there because when, in my early career, he was so kind to me. And we started speaking on the phone, and then he passed away, and I was so yeah. sad because I was ready to go down and visit. And um, so I said, wow, who's left? You know, I even, me, I'm left, you know, of the, <laughs> of the, of the Italian singers, you know, I mean, I'm not saying no one else is left, but the Italian American tradition of Italian singers. And I had the added benefit of really being a highly trained opera singer. And I yeah. love singing in the opera, but you know, we can discuss this. My background as an Italian American, not from an elite background, you know, my family didn't have a lot of money. Um, 
you you reached out to me because of what I wrote about my mother. And as you go on in life, you see your roots and the things that seemed like they were deficiencies really can become your strengths. And that is what I'm realizing now. Um, my career has brought me, as I mentioned, from the streets of Little Italy to the greatest stages in the world, not the Metropolitan Opera. And I'm going to say yet, but I've sung at Carnegie Hall. I've sung with the Boston Pops in, in Symphony Hall in Boston, considered the most, the best acoustics in the world. Um, I've sung on stages throughout Japan, throughout Korea, throughout the Middle East, throughout, I mean, I've been all over the world singing in, 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 in Italy. I'd like to do more singing in Italy, as a matter of fact, but I have sung there and um, been award, gotten so many awards. And I've also done um, TV hosting, as you know, I was hired by PBS television to host for Andrea Bocelli, Emil Volo, and Mostly because of my Italian background, I speak Italian, I learned as an opera singer, and also the fact that I know music, you know, and know voices. And I even won, I don't know if you know that, but it was a childhood dream of mine to be an actress, or an actor, as they say. I graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and last year, I won two Best Actress Awards for a very adorable little comedy, a short film called Santino, um, by D, uh, DJ Higgins directed it, and um, I had a great cast, and I won Best Actress at the Cutting Room Film Festival in New York, International Film Festival, and I was in Las Vegas last July for the Venus International Film Festival. I where, sang, we see, where can we see the film? I can show it to you. It's online if, on YouTube if you Google um, uh, Christina Fontanelli Santino. The, the whole film will come up, or Santino, DJ Higgins. I have a little promo clip of my performance. And it was really <laughs> special to, to win those awards. You know, it was like a childhood dream come true. You know, I, I yeah. would love to do more acting for film and television, too. You know? Well, every place you mentioned where you've been has, has, the, has the coronavirus. Every one of those places. <laughs> You know no where there kidding. is not the coronavirus, the only continent on the whole in the whole world, Antarctica. Really? Is that the yeah. case? But don't go there now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, as soon as you say that, then everybody rushes there, and then yeah, exactly. <laughs> With the penguins, I don't yeah. know. I mean, well, any place sounds better than New York at this point because really we got hit hard. You know. Yeah. Well, I know. I got. I, I was kind of. I was on my way back to New York, and I something told me to not take the flight. Good. Uh, I was going to Westchester with my cars in Bronx, and I was going to pick up my car. So I, I had a flight to Westchester, and I said, no, nah, this is before it all started. And I, yeah. uh, a couple of months ago, I said, maybe LaGuardia would be closer and easier than Westchester. And I changed the flight to LaGuardia, and then it started getting funky. And I said, maybe nowhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you I got a mask, right and I'm home. Great. <laughs> I'm here. Good, Joey. Good. Well, you know, we I live in Lincoln you. Center, and I also live in in Florida. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm able to to take the best of the worst of both worlds at this point. Both worlds are worse. You know, uh, I mean, Florida got hit too, pretty much. It's as soon as anybody arrives, uh, they're a suspect here because of uh, you don't know where it's coming from, or where it's going. Yeah. There's there's a a, a strange uh, feeling in the air now of everybody getting into what I would say is mental health. You know, we're at a place now with uh, where the, the real disease is how I'm thinking. And, I mean, we have to behave. You know, I, I wear a mask. When I went out yesterday, uh, I went I went to the unwashed. I went to Walmart. And uh, you know, I have I have a mask and I have the gloves and I have all that business. You know, oh, I'm from Buffalo. We have that anyway. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going through all this stuff and I'm, and I'm looking around and I'm realizing, wait a minute. When I get home, I got to wash all the fruit and vegetables. I got, I mean, it's such a, you, you can't get away from it. No way. I'm not going to put oh. Lysol on my pears. You know, I mean, it's. I do. You know what? I have this vegetable wash that I wash everything. I, I spray the cereal box. <laughs> I t they say you don't have to do it, but I'm like, but it's yeah. useless. Like I walk in my, I actually had it, Joey. I didn't tell you this. I caught the coronavirus um, middle of March just when they shut everything down. 
the next day I started taking my temperature and it was severe. It was really severe, but I was blessed because I never had an emergency breathing situation. I just battled it out here on my own in my apartment. Um, me and the good Lord above. And I'm, I'm not saying that lightly, you know, when you're by yourself and you're in like life and death, if you go either way, you learn how to be close to, I say, Jesus, I love Jesus and I love God. So yeah. it was just me and him. And I said, Lord, you know, you could take me. I, I really remained very calm. It's, it's daunting though, because all the, I had virtual visits with the doctor and Tylenol. And that's it. And you wake up and you have a fever every day for two weeks. And, you know, yeah. it's intense. But here I am. Well, I, I, yeah. I pray to the Lord to take me, but not to Scranton or Cleveland. <laughs> well, you know, I have other, other places. I, 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 like, I like those places. What are you <laughs> talking about? That's not heaven. That's There's not my good idea. There's people in Scranton and Cleveland. <laughs> How about West Virginia? Oh, my God. Oh, I love West Virginia. I have so many friends. I could tell you a story about West Virginia. I have stories about everything, you know. Uh, I sang down there my early career. Talk about Pat Cooper. I was on a show. I was really a kid. It was the beginning at the Wheeling Civic Center with, believe it or not, Don Cornell, Sergio Franchi, Pat Cooper, and myself. Oh, it was a country music show. Well, you know, <laughs> and I, I remember meeting the wheel, Don. The Wheeling, the wheeling you know, Jamboree. What are yeah. all these Italians doing in Wheeling, West Virginia? But it was a huge show. In the, the, answer is, the answer is construction. <laughs> <laughs> And anyway, I hung ahead. out with them. They were all so sweet and kind. And, you know, they really treated me very nicely. You know, I was a yeah. young woman alone <clears throat> on, the, on these bills with them, you know. And I have stories I'm not even going to share. They're all kind and polite and gentlemen. But I have some stories that could really, maybe someday I'll write a book. But, um... You know, Sergio Frankie was so sweet, and yeah. the next time we'll do a duet, because when he finally heard my voice, and then, unfortunately, he passed away way too young, you know? And well, you know, I made the comment about construction, and I was thinking, actually, uh, Al Martino was a construction worker, yeah, and he did yeah. and he did put cement, he laid cement, you know, I mean, he was, he was a worker before he sang as a career. And the guy who owned the RDA club in Philadelphia, uh, Palumbo, Frank Palumbo, uh, had him sing. And he, of course, you know, the, later on, he had all the hit songs and, and uh, uh, The Godfather. But, you know, oh. I, I was good friends with Al. And I just want to tell you this. I live in Buffalo, and I had a beautiful, you know, I was a star back then for a minute and a half. Oh, you've uh, been a big star for a long time, Joey. Come on. Well, now, wait a minute. I, Come on, I, now. I, I, I had a be beautiful home with a, uh, my father was partnered with a guy who owned a mansion that he didn't want anymore. So the basement had, the downstairs was a swimming pool. I had a, a screening room and a, a long bar in those days I was drinking. And uh, we had, what else was there in there? Oh yeah, the at the foot of the bed I had lions, you know, this is, this is my, my Bob Crew show wow. off days you know because wow. he always lived that way when he had the four seasons anyhow another story so i i have this beautiful place which became gilda radner house oh. at years later uh -huh. but that place when i was first a big disc jockey you know big name and all that and al martino i was showing off and i brought al over to the house thinking oh well you know i'm gonna show him how i live because he had that spanish eyes hit you yeah. know and i said I said, I'll take you over to my place, you know, and I thought I was going to get a big, one of those big, oh, my God, or no, oh, wow. But you know what? We walk in the place, and you know what Al does? He looks around, he looks at the pool, he says, yeah, I've had the same problem with the ceiling peeling from the humidity. <laughs> so instead, uh -huh. of, instead of being flattered and complimenting me, the guy was saying, yeah, so what? <laughs> right. He but I, lo I love it. But you know, you, now back to you. We, we, uh. We, we every year light the tree in Little Italy. We haven't done it this year. Yeah. But, you know, we're not going to be social for a while, I guess. But, we, yeah. you know, I always look forward to you singing for that. It's so cold. It's sometimes snowing, frigid. Yeah. And yet you're there and you have the same spirit all the time. That's not the only time you sing. I'm just saying that's – I look forward to it. Aww. You know, 
and we do the tree, and then you you are like a highlight. You're the highlight. You know, you're the angel uh, on the tree. <laughs> thank you, Joey. And remember, we had, when we had the parade, we used to always get on the uh, on the float. I was on there with yes. uh, Johnny. Oh no, I don't want to tell this story. Anyway, let's go back to you. <laughs> so you uh-huh. know, you, you, I've seen you perform. And and you're you're such a lovely person anyway. I mean, you're really you. you're a really good person, and you're a great great artist. Thank you. Um, and you have an album too, don't you? I do. I, well, let's I talk about that so we get at least get a plug in because I know you weren't doing that, but I want to do it. Okay. So I I was on the label actually very distinguished. They've had platinum records. Uh, Sandy Linzer, he he's yeah. won many had platinum records. He Who wrote. also wrote with Bob Crew with Four yes. Seasons. Yes, that's right. Lindsay I mean, Brown, I think, it was Larry Brown. I mean, they he wrote uh, yeah. "Working My Way Back to You," uh, yeah. so many hits at the Four Seasons, and he even had Barry Mantle and Whitney Houston sang one of his yeah. songs. So they discovered me, and they wanted me to record this album called "Christina Fontanelli Sings Great Italian Favorites." So that's my commercial album, and um, he said to me one day. You could sell more records than Whitney Houston. Can you believe that? I mean, he really believed in my voice. I, I, um, you know, I was very kind of naive, and I always was ambivalent about being a star. So if I'm not better known, it's partially my fault, you know. But I could explain. It's been a life journey for me, you know, of many things. But my album, actually, I have some here uh, as inventory, and I sent out today that I'd like to start because everything's going online, you yeah. know, I thought that it would be lovely to use selling my CDs as a fundraiser for two charities that are dear to my heart. I mean, I, I, we could go on and on, but uh, I, you, as you know, I, have, I run a Christmas show. This would be right. the 17th year of Christmas in Italy, and we raise funds for St. Jude's, and I have sent some funds to an orphanage in Naples that's very dear to my heart. It's called the Casa Familia. So I thought if I sell these CDs, um, since so much is going online and since my live performances are now cut down this year, I could possibly raise some funds, you know, for the charity. And I thought we need to do an American charity too. So I thought, you know, I think the Red Cross has been doing great work, the American Red Cross. So I said yeah. maybe we could send some funds to the Red Cross. Oh, that's There's great. Really great charities. I mean, it's hard to choose which one, you know. But So my album is online. It's on iTunes. It's on Apple, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm not the world's most savvy online tech person, but I'm trying to learn. And uh, it's also on YouTube. I don't even know how it got on there, but it's on there. So you can listen on YouTube. Um and if anybody would like to purchase it, I will. You can purchase it through my website or through uh, whatever those online things are. And if it's a physical CD, I will sign it and, you know, send it. And we'll send some money. Oh, to that's Harry. great. Uh, where, where did I see you? What's that opera house that's not Carnegie Hall and not the Met? What is the name of that place? There's a place on the Upper East Side. There's a, a guy... Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember that? Um, was it at my Christmas show, Joey? Did yeah, I can't. I can't remember the name of the place. Well, that's all. we have gone all over New York City in yeah. every venue, almost to right to. Well, I saw you at one. I I saw yeah. you. I mean, I performed in in New Jersey at the Performing Arts Center. Beautiful, beautiful. It's like a European opera house. I I actually sang Madame Butterfly there, and um, I sung in concerts. You know, like in many theaters in New York City, leading to Carnegie Hall the last two years, and um, Merkin Concert Hall and Tribeca Performing Arts yeah, Center. I'm trying to think, was it Play Symphony House Symphony Symphony Space? Symphony Space. That's right. Yeah, that, that, right. that's right, Joey. We had. A I year, was I, I was years. with somebody. I was with somebody from. Uh, an, uh, I I remember it was Alex Wynn from uh, Vietnam. Oh, is that and, right? And you were singing, yeah, and, and you were in Italian, singing in Italian. You did something in Italian. Yes, well, half the show is dedicated to Italian songs. I yeah, even, and he asked me, he said, do you understand what she's saying? And I said, <laughs> well, there's subtitles, you know, which yeah. there aren't. <laughs> I mean, there was something in the um, program. I usually 
explain everything that I sing. That makes me yeah. different than a lot of entertainers that or yeah. opera singers because I try to be very inclusive and tell the stories and um, you know let people understand what it's about. I even have been running the last few years opera and Broadway of the Hamptons where I bring in an incredible tenor, an incredible baritone, and I, and always there's young people on my shows, children and youth, you know, or young singers. I like to give them a platform, and um, they're amazing, and, and people love it. I mean, they love it. I, so Well, you I know, know the what, only other opera house, I'm just stop, stop me for a second, is, a, is in Asbury Park. Oh, I sang That's, there. I, I've sung there, too. I yeah, sang that's in my the only other one. Huh? That's, you know, that's the only famous opera house outside of uh, New York, I think, is the, is Asbury Park. Is that correct? You mean I heard in the that. area in the in the tri-state area? Um, oh, is it just that? Because I I have the no. Well, head you head know, head. there was opera is having a very difficult time. I mean, I I really really wish, and part of my mission is to spread the knowledge scientifically and metaphysically. What happens? when people listen to classical music, part of my, when I'm performing, I always mention this. I say, congratulate yourselves. Today, your blood pressure went down. Your cholesterol was lowered. Uh, <laughs> this has been scientifically proven. And um, children learn better if they, if the crime rates go down. There's so much so, so uh, societal benefits from this kind of music, probably including Broadway show tunes, that kind of thing, old fashioned, you know? But we're losing it. And I think we're losing an incredible opportunity to make the world a better place. They're taking music out of the schools. They're, you know, what does it cost to put a piano in a classroom and let kids play or a violin or, or you know, we're losing, we're not, we're not using common sense. This is very beneficial. So part of my platform as I go forward, I'm actually starting my own foundation. I mean, I've been... This, it's called fiscally sponsored under a nonprofit. My shows, Christmas in Italy, the Hampton, the, with children. Through the years, we've had 80 kids. Like if you multiply that by 15 years, that's a lot of kids, you know? Yeah. And um, so I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to get some funding. Otherwise, this stuff can't happen. You know, you can't sing a card. Well, that's, that's why the opera is... is, is uh is dwindling is because it's very expensive to stage in a uh, very a, expensive a classic opera. Oh, it's so expensive. And also, you know, we're used to it and we're used to the classical music in film because all the movies have classical music. That's right. And it's all, I mean, everybody, I was going to say John Williams, you know, who you know from Boston, uh, yeah. you know, he had that time when he was conducting the Boston orchestra. And I, I used to, I worked on star Wars. So, oh, you uh, did? yeah, that's part of my, my little charity work. Oh. I, I got a new car. <laughs> oh, it's what? That's nice. Now I want to ask you about something. You know, uh, this today when we're, we're doing this broadcast to uh, forever, you know, anybody can access it at any time. Which and that's what great. I wanted to do. I want to celebrate people who belong in the spotlight more in a brighter light than they've been in. And you're one of them. That's why I asked uh, you to be on. Thank you, Joe. That's the main reason. And, uh, uh, you know, there are great people who uh, don't always have the, you know, you're not going to be on America's Got Talent. Yes. And uh, you're not going to be a judge on, on uh, Dancing with the Stars. And I, I don't see you on Judge Judy. So uh, I guess we've got to put you somewhere, you know. Oh, Joey. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I love what you wrote about your mother. And it wasn't especially for Mother's Day because every day is Mother's Day, as I mentioned earlier. So give me a little bit of that, okay? Would you do that? Would you mind yes. doing that? I'll be happy to, Joey. You know, during this pandemic, I do a lot from instinct. And yeah. I haven't been letting out. I haven't been singing in my living room. And I haven't been. I really was trying to understand what's the most important thing I can do. So I got an inspiration to send out this Mother's Day message along with a, a link to my song, Mama. You know, as I say, you know, I'm a singer. Yeah. I can't just talk about what I, what I do. So... <laughs> And the truth is, that's the second most uh, requested song of my whole entire oh, yeah. career. But and, any Con and Connie Francis. Yeah, years one ago. time I sang for Connie Francis in yeah. her honor at a gala in Palm Beach. 
for an organization called Il Chirco, a wonderful organization that was important in my career. I mean, I met people through that organization. I wound up singing at the Palm Beach Opera. And so anyway, they were honoring Connie. And I said, geez, what can I sing for her? What, do I have the nerve to sing Mama, you know, oh. for her? And I did. And um, my version, it came from my heart. I do speak in Italian during the uh, musical interlude. That's my recording of it. And do you know, she was so gracious and kind. Yeah. And afterwards she said, I loved how you sang Mama. Can you, isn't that sweet? Well, she you been... know, she was the first successful music business woman. Did you know that? She owned all of her publishing. Oh, did she? Yeah, and she wow. was at MGM. She made a partnership deal with them. And she wow. was in the movie, remember Where the Boys Are? That was her big film about Fort Lauderdale, of course, you know, uh, back in the days when they could gather on the beach. Oh, gee, that seems like a long time ago. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> like last week. <laughs> so anyway, look, well, back to your story. Now, I, I got away from it for a minute. I don't, I'm sorry. You were, you were telling us what you wrote about your mother. Yeah. So, you know, I decided people haven't heard from me for a while, since Easter, actually. And um, I got an inspiration to write this Mother's Day wish to my friends and fans. I have a database, you know, of email addresses. And my mother, like I said, I think as we go on in life, we realize why do we have the roots we have? I am so God driven. Why God gave us the, the parents he gave us. We could have even had a very difficult road, but I do believe that if we use that to grow and evolve, um, and, and find the path in our life that God wanted us on. Um, so my mother had a difficult background, and I, I always honor her. She used to come with me to my shows. My mother had the most angelic voice, a natural talent. I actually play part of her recording of Ave Maria at 16 years old during my Christmas in Italy show every year. Angelic, musically talented, she won a contest on the radio, um, but I did write about her affliction. You know, my grandparents were very poor Italian immigrants, honest, hardworking, came to the United States on my mother's side, uh, settled in Hoboken, New Jersey, and we know who came from Hoboken. So my, my mother loved, loved to sing, but she was a victim of two epidemics. The scarlet fever epidemic that I don't know so much about, uh, but I'm going to look it up. And polio. My mother and her sister caught the polio uh, virus. And in my mother's case, it was very severe. Her foot was like dangling, I was told. My grandmother, an Italian immigrant that really never learned Italian. That's why I could never, I mean, English. That's why I could never be too harsh with people that, you know. <laughs> She used to watch, I don't know how this was, but she loved I Love Lucy. And she would watch I Love Lucy like every day until <laughs> you couldn't talk to her in English. It was really like, you know, something <laughs> I don't understand. But, you know, they found a doctor and my mother had to have her leg, her ankle fused. Her yes. foot was deformed. She wore two size shoes her whole life and her lower leg was deformed. And my mother was a very, very beautiful woman, you know, and she had to deal with that the, her whole life. And so are you. So uh, are you. Well, that's so sweet. Thank you, Joey. I, I, my mother, if, I, if you say that about me, my mother was, you know, um, anyway. She um, seconded it. Go ahead. You know, <laughs> but the thing is, I believe that had something to do also with the singing. Like, you know, it's like she had... She, she could have easily been a professional. But they took her to a voice coach early, and he said, you could be the next Lily Pons. Lily Pons was a very yeah. famous singer at that time at the Metropolitan Opera. But my grandparents didn't have money. And my mother told me once that my grandmother asked her, you can either go out with boys or you can sing and she chose to go out with boys. <laughs> with boys and you know my parents how sweet you know they they 
got married. And my father was 19 and she was 21. She was the, the cougar, you know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> they met at Coney Island. Can you imagine? I mean, who makes this stuff up? My father was from <laughs> Brooklyn and you can't make this up. And so she became a mother instead of, you know, a singer. Although I think her whole life, I mean, she loved to sing. She loved to sing way more than I loved to sing. Way more. The, the funny thing about my life that I must share is that I never, ever um, identified as being a singer. It's, the, it's very weird. It's very not correct. I did not understand the gift God gave me. I didn't understand the level of it. I was disciplined, but I could have been more disciplined. But you know what? Like I said, it's my life's journey. Now I understand it. Now I'm very serious. Now I'm like determined to use the rest of my life for the best purpose I can. I didn't understand opera. I didn't understand. You know, and for me, singing is like breathing. It was so organic. Um, even my, even acting, anything. I believe that Italians are so talented that we take it for granted. Like, you know, for us, being creative and creating beauty and being talented, it's, it's second nature. And unless you're born into a family or uh, in a society that can nurture it and point you in the right direction and financially. and But in my case, I really did go. I really tried. I studied. I had a, a, a job where I paid for my voice lessons. Um, maybe it wasn't my destiny. At certain points, I was supposed to sing. In Italy, I won a contest. I was supposed to sing one of the leads in La Boheme. And in 30 years, the American Opera auditions had never been canceled, but it was canceled the year that I was supposed to go there. Um, I for, those, to for those who don't know, La Boheme is uh, Rent. Yeah, it's yeah rent. The, the same yeah. story, the original yeah. um, opera by Giacomo Puccini, which is so yeah. beautiful. Um, and I had some other things happen. I was supposed to sing opposite one of the big stars from the Metropolitan Opera, Roberto Alagna, in a very important opera called Il Tabarro with the Palm Beach Opera. I was scheduled to do that opposite Roberto Alagna. And that year, the, the negotiations for him fell through and he wanted too much money. They weren't going to pay him enough, you know, and I would be in the cast opposite his very famous wife at the time, Angela Gorgiu. These are, these are well-known people from the opera field, and they replaced it for me with the opera Merry Widow, the Merry Widow. So I was in my element anyway because <laughs> I had acting training. I got fantastic reviews that said brilliant acting from the Palm Beach Post. And the other thing that I was able to handle that the other opera singers were having issues with was the conductor who I understood for my years of singing on the borscht belt and he was not your typical very very disciplined opera conductor he was the son of the man that used to the conductor that ran the palm beach opera and his conducting was a little erratic i mean <laughs> i had no issue with it i was so calm and comfortable with that because i didn't come from only the opera field you know i came from showbiz did you so, know bobby lapin Yes, I did meet him, and I, yes. Well, he was the head of the of the of, of the center, you know. The Palm Beach Pops. Yeah. Yes, and I was. Do you know he's a Pepsi Cola bottler in the Northeast? That that I, was I his didn't profession. Know that. I yeah, didn't well, know. maybe we shouldn't be telling that. <laughs> no, no, I, I was supposed to sing with the Palm Beach Pops, but um, I don't yeah. know. It just never came through, you know, and um. So anyway, Kravitz, the Kravitz Center, that's what it's called. The yes, whole, the whole. I've sung at the Kravitz Center. I sang, I made my debut with the Palm Beach Opera as Nedda in the Pagliacci. I mean, uh -oh, I've done my, my bird, the bird just <laughs> jumped on my head. Like he wants to tweet. <laughs> what, is, is that, what kind of bird is that, Joey? Uh, a, a painful one when it's on your head and you're pooping. <laughs> What's his name? Her name. Its name. Her name. Oz. I just call her Oz. Oz. Okay. The girl from Oz. <laughs> so anyway, Nature. Let's, we got, we're almost out of time here. I want to find out about your mother. So what did you write? Okay. So I described her condition, um, this yeah. polio, and how she was determined to have a full life. And she did. 
She went on to have a very full life. I wrote about her speaking about her childhood during the Depression. Very poor situation. Like they would be called, they would call her upstairs to sing sometimes, and she was annoyed because she was playing on this. Just, uh, there's the bird. There's the just bird. keep going. I Ignore love it. it. <laughs> so, um, but you know, they would sew buttons. I, I'm giving my, I look good for my age. I'm not telling anybody how old I am, but you know what I'm saying. My roots are, <laughs> and, and in any case, I have Italian genes. I look, thank God for that. I'll. <laughs> But anyway, um, they would sew buttons on a on a card just to make money. And she told me there was a man upstairs, a, an atheist, who was so kind to them. He would put a wire through the window so they could have electricity. Angelo. Oh. I remember him to, her talking about him and talking about her childhood. Like, it was the best, most fun, you know, most wonderful childhood. Can you imagine? She had a polio limp. She had poverty, but she remembers my grandfather was always singing the fresh fish, the, the family, the happiness. And I wrote in my email that I think a lot of people out there during this pandemic may be experiencing this for the very first time. They're stuck home. We don't hear the good stories. You know, they're stuck home with their families, yeah. their children, um, this sense of belonging the sense yeah. of being in the good households, you know, I know we know we have some issues in others, but the ones that are loving and kind are treasuring this time with their families and their children. And what I wish we could find is the happiness and security of that, not of money, not of things, but that feeling of closeness with families the children would feel so much more secure. I mean, it breaks my heart when I hear the children. I don't even want to say this. It's so hard to even verbalize it, but they're committing suicide nowadays. They're on medication for anti-depression. And it, it, they need spiritual. They need their family. They need the comfort of loving parents. And yeah. it, it breaks my heart, which is what also motivates me in my work you know, with the children yeah. and the concerts. And so what I'm trying to say is as hard as my background was, I'm not even saying I, I actually had a brother that died of drug abuse and a car crash. His nephew died. I mean, I've had a lot of tragedies to deal with in my life, which yeah. also held me back. My mother needed me. She, you know, needed me in her later years. And there was the hurricane. She was evacuated. I mean, I had to show up a lot and I did, but what did I learn? And now it's coming out. This perseverance, this um, solid, they had solid values. You know, my grandparents, mm -hmm. they were solid. They knew right from wrong. They knew yeah. hard work. They knew like cleanliness and things that I think people are taking for granted, but maybe this pandemic will bring it back. And if I'm ever blessed enough to go back out in public on a stage. I was scheduled to sing, for example, at Fine Signs 54 Below in April. We've rescheduled it for October. Who knows? Who knows? I have two holds on theaters for December the 6th for Christmas in Italy. Who knows? Um, instead of the stage show, perhaps I'll take the footage that's already been filmed of the show through the years and create a TV special that I might like to share with either PBS or maybe the Catholic channels or, you know, with the kids, with the music, with the mandolins and Santa <laughs> Claus. And it's really wonderful. And, and, and uh, the accordion. Don't forget the accordion. And the accordion, the accordion. The accordion. <laughs> yes, the accordion. Maybe you could be part of it, Joey. Oh, no, don't. We'll interview you or, you know. But I have to correct something about you. You said the Italians having all this uh, expression of art and, and talent. Yeah. So do the Irish. You know, uh, and there was that great prayer that uh, uh, made the wind hit you in oh, the back beautiful. of the head and, and God beautiful. hold you in his hand. And I, I have that image that God has me in his hand like this. Aww. But I'm afraid that one day he's going to do a push-up. Uh, that's my uh, great fear. <laughs> but you see, I, I also wrote about that. It, you know, the blessing of believing yeah. that we will go to a better place. This, I, I don't... I wish everybody, even if it was a pipe dream, even if it was rose-colored glasses, it's really great to believe that. I don't believe yeah. it's rose-colored glasses. I've read about this stuff a lot, you know? 
And um, well, it's, I I've got a I've got a new pair of glasses, <laughs> oh. and I see the world differently. I see it with you as being a wonderful friend and a lover of everybody who is on the planet who is of goodwill. That's the way you are. Uh, and I appreciate you so much and your talent. And now you're you going to sing a little bit of acapella of mama. You're going to do a little of that. Come on. Yeah. You know, I, I, like I said, I've been sick. I haven't really been singing or anything, but can I sing part of my mother's favorite song? Maybe it might actually be uh, better. Yeah. Do it. So do whatever you want. Her favorite song went like this. Uh, cool. The bird just just flapped her wings for you. <laughs> for my <laughs> mama so Francesca. And have a have a wonderful day and every day. And thank you for being with oh, me today, Joey. Christina. Thank you, Joey. Thank you and so much. I, I didn't even mention because you're so gracious. And I have such great memories of being on your sh program. I mean, we didn't even talk about that at all. And you're so kind and humble. You're you know like you're not even. I remember staying up really late, and you gave me shots, so to speak, in my early career, and would invite me on your show, and I would come on, like, what, 1 o'clock in the morning? I remember waiting in the, whatever it was, <laughs> 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I mean, and, and also many times on WOR, and then a wonderful interview when you were doing the TV in Times Square, I remember that. And you've been a blessing, Joey. We love you. And well, I'm happy you. you're doing this show. Uh, you belong where people can hear you, you know? So I'm happy that, and I'm very honored that you invited me today. I'm oh, here, thank you. Know? So we'll do this again. Anyway, it's wonderful, and God bless you. Thank you. Let a smile be your umbrella. Don't get a mouthful of rain. Uh -huh.